What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fazma, man, Eric Sheetsaber. It's fun to be recording, re -record, be recording an NBA show where we actually know the players. We have some idea of what's happening because we are now in the postseason and we haven't done many of the videos yet because we finally had the four games over the weekend and we didn't do them then. But uh, we've got the three game slate tonight and I'm excited. I'm excited to get back into the NBA stuff and uh, to play, a, you know, not a real, it's not a huge slate or anything, but you get, you get three games. That's that's pretty good. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about tonight. Um, it, she, is, it, is, it is sort of a shame that you're not getting Luca, huh? Uh, I mean, in what in what sense? Like, it's oh, I mean, for the playoff. I mean, like, just in terms of uh, being a fan. You know what I mean? It's uh, he's not out for the whole postseason necessarily yet. It's just yeah. Like, I feel bad for Dallas, man. They get their two home games. They can be without him for both of them. That's rough. You know, it's like, yeah. Uh, it's it, uh, you're right. It is rough. Um, and these guys still doesn't want a playoff series yet, and I have a feeling it's gonna. It's kind of at that point where it's gonna start lingering a little bit, and it kind of bothers me because uh, this guy is clearly one of the best six, five, six players in the NBA, maybe even higher. Um, yeah, it is a shame, but we go with what we can. It's a shame for Toronto to lose Scotty Barnes and, and that that's a tough series as it is. It's a, that's a shame. And it's one I expected Toronto to be more competitive than they were the other night. We'll see what happens tonight, but, uh, let's, 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 uh, let's go game by game here and see what we can do to maybe, maybe get off a little bit of what's, you know, going to be a, as every NBA slate is in the postseason, a fairly chalky NBA slate and maybe find some cool plays that we can get different with. All right. Uh, sheets. With that said, what are your thoughts on this initial, or do you have an overall thing on the slate, or do you want to? I mean, obviously the yeah, overall. Yeah, it's it's the same. I mean, it's the same. It looks the same as it did the last time these all these guys played. In that, you'd love to be able to play and beat in Jokic. You know, um, these these guys stand out as 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 top scorers, and um, you'd like to be able to play both of those if if possible, and then you have to just figure out, I mean, if, if the value makes it worth it. Now, the other day with all these guys playing, you had Dinwiddie showing up in like hundred percent of lineups because he made everything work and he was, he was fine, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm looking overall at, at, at deep value, for example. And, you know, I, I guess my first one is in the, this game, you know, and I'm currently right now getting um, precious as like six and a half X at 4,300. And then the next one I'm getting is, is Boucher at 4,400 um, as far as values go. Um, so I guess with Barnes out, I guess that's helping these guys in some way. Um, um, I guess that would be my priority, you know, try, try to get him beat in and, you know, if, see if you can't use those other guys as values. Now, Siakam and Van Vliet, you know, that's, that's a totally different kind of thing. You know, it's a totally different type of range. It goes, those two guys, I mean, rates rates to be pretty decent, but would you prefer Siakam at 92 or Harden at 93, you know, or would you prefer Van Vliet at 75 or, or Brunson in the other game at 72, you know, um, I have all these guys really, really close to one another. Um, that's just, that's the way, way, way I have it. So for now it's going to be Embiid, Precious, um, and I don't know if I'm going to get to Van Fleet or Siakam. What, what do you like this game? Yeah, so uh, the disappointing effort the other night from Toronto. I do think that Scotty Barnes being out is a, obviously an important factor. Um, I have interest in every one of these guys, to be honest with you. I just, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they measure out with everybody else. I think that my favorite would be Van Fleet and then Anna Newby, then Siakam, but you could easily reverse that. I, I don't, I don't think it's a, it's a huge gap. I like the idea of the Van Fleet because you can play them with the Brunson and the, uh, and uh, excuse me, Brunson and uh, Dinwiddie who are almost impossible in my opinion to not make your priority plays. So you get a guy in the same price range. It should keep his ownership lower than what he's being projected for now. So uh, in order, I've got it as F, as Van Vliet, um, then Ananubi, then Siakam. But Ananubi is more of a safe, not going for ceiling kind of a thing. Um, and Siakam definitely had, can put up a ceiling type of game. We've seen it against Philly even in the past. So that's the guys I've got right now. I wouldn't be surprised if they do something, like if, if they try to make some weird changes. So so just be, you know, Boucher is not going to, nobody's going to be shocked if Boucher doesn't, doesn't uh, do much today or whatever. Um, but at the same time, like, I, I, I'm sorry, Boucher is going to be owned. 
you're going to have ownership on Achua. Maybe, maybe you take a weird shot on Ken Birch at 3,200. Well, the reason the reason why I don't think Press is going to be that high owned is because he's they see center only. So if you wanted to play, I didn't think about this. So if you didn't want to play Embiid and Jokic, you can't play Precious. I mean, you yeah, but I don't think that's like a common build. I don't think people are trying to play Embiid and Jokic. Oh, you don't think? Okay. No, because you're going to Dinwiddie and Brunson are the priorities. Clearly, I think on the slate, um, I don't think anybody else comes close to them in terms of who will be chalky or who should be or whatever. Um, but that's just my take. I. I I, I, I like Embiid. Um, I prefer Jokic. It's the same thing you hear from me all the time. But I do like Embiid a lot. And his, you know, you get a little bit of savings on him versus Jokic today. Not much. It's a few hundred. But I'm trying to find any excuse to, to maybe do something a little different. James Harden is still too cheap. I understand that it's not the same guy. It doesn't need to be the same guy. He was 6 for 17 the other day. put a 56 fantasy points. He had 14 assists. He still is a guy. He's just a really good basketball player. So, Maybe what I'll do in this game is play Harden um, and skip most of these other guys. I don't mind the idea of going back to Maxi. I think there's this guy is he's really, really good. He's not going to go 14 for 21 every game, but he's I mean, he's legitimately really, really good. He's turning the corner. He and Jordan Poole, I feel like are on a similar trajectory. They're both like guys who God like like could be those those next the next, you know, guys averaging 27 a game, 28 a game in a couple of years. Um, they're really, really talented. So I have it as I actually think Harden's my priority. Harden, then Embiid, then Maxi, then Harris. If I had to go anyway, I do think Harris is going to be overlooked for what it's worth. Um, I don't love playing Harris in general. He was really, really good last uh, the last game against Toronto, and I, I don't mind if you want to take that shot. I just don't. It, it's certainly not a priority, but I do really like Harden, um, and that's where I'm mostly at on this one. Harden, then Embiid, uh, then Maxi. Then Harris. I uh, don't think anybody else is in play. I, I think, except except Matt. Oh, no, it's so funny! You're talking about Maxi. I'm like, I was thinking Maxi Kleber at first. I'm like, no, oh, no, I don't. Long either. game, and, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Everybody was all disappointed in Maxi. Oh, with Luca out, we thought he. I was like, with Luca out, he's much worse. Like, don't you guys? Doesn't anybody realize it? He's going to be in play again because of his price. But whatever. Um, all right. Uh, what about this Utah Dallas game? What have you got for me here? So, yeah, so as you were saying, um, uh, Brunson and Dinwiddie are just going to be on the court a ton, they're going to have the ball a ton, and you know, they're going to be they're going to be need to be they're going to need to be on the court a, a ton and hold the ball a ton. So, uh, those two, as you mentioned, are probably the two priorities that you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to get to. Um, you know, Mitchell pulled uh, whatever, like. To like traded the update the game before he was he did literally he did you know, negative zero in the first half and then and then uh he does and that's what he does that they all do man <laughs> they just do remember that one night when you had a shot in the 888 i think you ended up finishing like fourth or something but you were pissed off because mitchell had like three fantasy points at halftime and he ended up with like 50 he ended up with 50 <laughs> it's like i was like well just don't worry it'll happen they're down they by just, 20 they just do it's freaking crazy you know it's that he just takes over at the end yeah, so uh, one thing I noticed now, now obviously it was what's his name that had the big game the other day, uh, uh, Bogdanovich. Um, he, you know, he just he just got hot. Um, one thing I noticed though is that none of the Utah guys really got any ownership uh, at all uh, yeah, on that slate. Mm-hmm. On that slate, um, so I feel as though you're supposed to take a shot at at at, at least one of these guys and. Look, maybe it's not Bogdanovich. Maybe it's like I had, I played what's his name uh, at like 8% ownership the other day, Clarkson. He didn't do it. I don't think he did anything. But I think that one of these Utah guys is going to have a big game at, at low ownership. I don't know exactly what it's going to be, mm-hmm. but um, I think that you should probably take a shot, you know, and make sure that you have at least one of them, you know, whether it be, and I, I would take one of the scores, you play Mitchell, uh, what's his name? Uh, totally different types of players, but Mitchell. I, I still think Clarkson, I don't know, uh, Con, Conley, guys that, you know, can, might end up shooting the ball. I wouldn't go back to Bogdanov just because I think that's what people will do because um, he, uh, you know, that's that's who did well last time. But I think that you shouldn't let these Utah guys on a three-game slate go, go unowned again. Yep. Um, I, I actually don't have a lot of interest in Utah, so. Um, but I do think Mitchell, I, my priority would be Mitchell Gobert than Clarkson. 
I love the idea of just getting a really low on Clarkson and just hoping things break in your favor. It yeah. is hard for him because you we got to remember with Clarkson, it's a little bit of a different situation. So playing with the lead, it's not like he should be on the court in the fourth quarter, really in the last six minutes of the game or to end the second quarter either. If they're playing from behind and they're struggling for any, whatever reason, that's when you might see him out there. Just keep in mind his minutes. Well, while most good players minutes go up in the postseason. He's the kind of guy who definitely runs the risk of having playing far less minutes in the postseason because you're going to have Conley out there for more minutes. They ramped him up to play more. Royce O'Neal will usually be out there defending. And then you've got Bogdanovich, Gobert, and Mitchell. There's just not room for him. So right. that's that's my that's my worry with him a little bit. Um, uh, super get weird play is Hassan Whiteside. Again, don't know how much I'm actually going to use that, but I like to throw those out there because if you're playing the the trying to win the 100 100k off of you know a 20 dollar buy in in this kind of a tournament, that's the kind of play that if things just happen to work out exactly right, Gobert picks up two quick fouls and literally you know we would, we've seen it before 25 fantasy points in, in six minutes from from Whiteside. So against a team without a front line, I think that's kind of interesting. Um, these guys are going to play a million minutes for Dallas. Uh, don't know exactly what to do with it outside of Brunson and Dinwiddie. I think you could like, you'll see some ownership on Finney Smith. It's a minutes play. I think it's meh. I think that Reggie Bullock will play a bunch of minutes. It's meh to me. Um, you might get minutes out of Kleber and Powell. It's interesting that, that they would just split the minutes and, and play Gobert like that. I also think Dallas might try to do some like weird, small. well, what, it, no matter what, they're going to be going small because they don't have a true big, like Kleber, Kleber and Powell are sort of pseudo bigs or whatever. Um, not overly excited about any of those guys outside of Brunson and Dinwiddie, who are clearly the priorities of the slate for me. Um, so I, I'm not, a, I'm not overly, uh, overly enthusiastic about, about Dallas. I, I do want to point out that if something break, like you can't play these guys like the Trey Burks and all those things, but there is a weird chance that if things got kind of messy or ugly, or they needed some, something, somebody gets foul trouble, that you might see them do something shuffling their lineup a little bit. I just have a feeling about that, but I don't know what we can, what we can do in terms of putting it to use. I guess the one other thing that I've considered that they could do is they could just say F it to Gobert because Gobert is never going to catch the ball in the post. Anyway, you're really just worried about the rebounding factor and that's a big worry, but if, could you try to maybe play Bertans at the five and do what the Clippers did to, to Utah to be, to knock him out of the play, playoffs last year, and could you could you get away with going small and play Gobert off the court? Just put a three point shooter out with all the guards. Um, so just 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 some food for thought here. Um, uh, just 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 thinking as the, as the series goes on, where we might see guys play minutes who literally are getting zero minutes right now. Um, anyway, we can move on to Denver Golden State. Uh, one of the series I feel most comfortable that Denver has zero chance to win the series. Um, as I said before, and I'll say it again. I don't see how Denver is going to have any chance in the series. Every time they play a game within 10 points, I'm going to be slightly surprised. Uh, they might, maybe they'll, maybe they'll pull one out, but it's why I can sort of argue with, for getting a little bit off of Jokic at the same time, Jokic is the one man show. So I, I obviously love Jokic, but there's a lot of other guys to love too, I guess. Uh, I do that. I think I pick Jokic ahead of, of, uh, of Embiid, but it's close. I, it's not even that close, actually. I do like the Okich better. I don't know. They both have good matchups for them. Uh, I don't see how, I mean, I guess the game could stay close, but I, I just don't see how Denver has a chance in this series. And may, maybe what you do is you, I would say mix in some of the lower owned guys like Barton, but Barton's going to have a lot of ownership, especially after the way he played the other night. It's also a good kind of game flow for him. So Barton, maybe you could take a shot with Aaron Gordon. I don't know. I, I'm not finding much else on the Denver uh, side of things. Are is there anything that you've got over? No, here? no. For me on Denver, it's just Jokic. Okay. Um, uh, what do you like on Golden State? You like like Draymond, maybe? Tell you what, man. We gotta. We. I'm not gonna play this guy, but I'm just saying, Jordan Poole is a stud. Like this guy is absolutely awesome, and I really think like that's why they didn't need to trade anybody. That's why they didn't need to try and firm up anything. They, they, they basically have rebuilt their backcourt their or their, their, they've rebuilt their future while contending for a title between guys like Kaminga and Jordan Poole. And I just am very impressed by Jordan Poole. I don't know how to, to really prioritize anything else. Steph is not, you know, he, he, he was fine. He did not quite look right. I don't think we can really play him at 9,100. I don't know how many minutes he's even going to play. Um, 
I think you could always make an argument for Clay, but maybe maybe the guy for me would be Draymond. I guess he'd probably be my favorite. Uh, but it is kind of interesting because it's a it's a good game with a good total and and not a whole lot to love here. So yeah. it's just interesting to, to to think about. But I, I do like Draymond, and I think Clay would be my next favorite. I don't mind if you want to take the shot on Jordan Poole. I think he'll be low owned again. And he's the kind of guy who can make 10 threes in a game. And that's always, you know, that, that'll get you there. Um, and, and Looney's always a guy that's going to show up as a, as a good point per dollar play. What's weird is, um, are they even playing in minutes? Like he isn't, his, he's, he doesn't play anymore. Um, he hasn't played more than 15 minutes and no, 15 minutes. That's his thing. He used to play 35 and still couldn't get there. So and he was actually showing some upside at points during the season too. Yeah, but that's because there was no Clay, no Steph, no Dream. There's nobody. There was nobody. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's kind of hard. Like you're gonna walk into rebounds. There was um, no nothing. Yeah, it's it it. it they they've been so banged up all year. Um, okay, so I I don't know, man. This is a it's a tough situation. I don't know exactly. Uh, I think Draymond is your best bet. Um, I think he'll probably be the most owned, but that's probably for good, for pretty good reason. It is interesting that they're going to do the small thing against them. I guess your your my get weird play would be Bielitsa instead of uh, the who we're talking about. I think Bielitsa actually could end up getting more run than people think, and Jokic out on the perimeter defending like means you should end up with some open looks from three. And if Bielitsa can, can make a few of those, he might play his way into some more minutes. But I, I don't mind if you want to take a shot on Bielitsa or, or Looney today. So I think it would be Draymond, then those guys probably for me. It's a tough one today. Not, not, not the easiest one, but we will touch on it at 6, six Eastern. Yeah, I'll be around. Uh, yeah, but it is not um, certainly tr- tricky to figure out what to do. Um, <laughs> is there anything? I don't know if you had a chance to look at, at FanDuel. Um, yeah, so um, the, the difference is on – uh, I, I did look at it, but I don't have my, my major differences in pricing right in front of me. Let me just do this real quick. Um, hold on one second. Gobert, Gobert looks cheap over there. Gobert. Okay, so let me just see what I've got. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, it's still Brunson. It's ridiculous. They put they put in beat and Jokic is power forward eligibles. <laughs> Great. That's hilarious. That's just because people wanted to play them both. That's exactly. Silly. That's exactly it. There, people That's want to play them so, both. So silly. Um, so go ahead, go for it. Play, play. So play Gobert at center. Just stick it to everybody. <laughs> They, do they have anybody just center eligible? Doesn't look like they do. Go bear. <laughs> oh, just go bear. You're right. Um, everybody's basically similarly priced. Uh, Jordan Poole, he would be the one I would play on FanDuel that stands out the most. Um, he's 6,300 versus 7,900. Maxi Kleba is in play, I guess, a little bit on both sides if you wanted to go for all the spend ups. Yep. Um, yeah, pretty much pretty similar between the two sides today, actually, more than usual. Uh, Bogdanovich, worst play on on Fanduel. That's pretty much it. Um, oh, maybe 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 you could argue for a Monty Morris on Fanduel. Uh, you know, maybe I should have mentioned Monty Morris on DraftKings too. I actually think Monty Morris would be the guy behind Jokic. I would play on Denver. That's interesting. He's you know he's he's he's, he, he's playing minutes. He's he's pretty good. <laughs> Don't really have a whole lot of a, other fancy things to talk about. I just want to take a quick look at Bones Highlands price. Cause I think there's a chance he plays like almost no minutes, but I think that, he, yeah, he would be the super get weird play. He's too expensive. If he was 30, he's too weird probably at 4,900, but if he was 3,900, I would take some shots there. But I think Jordan Poole is the one who stands out between the sites. My priorities on DK and FanDuel for that matter are Brunson Dinwiddie, at least one of the Toronto Effie uh, Van Vliet and Anubi Siakam Precious. But I think Precious is, is probably going to look like the best one. And I think your your get weird one is is the Kim Birch because he'll be the one who's low owned, um, and then I like Harden, Jokic, and Draymond as my priorities with one of Mitchell, Gobert, or Clark Clarkson. That's okay. pretty much what I got. All right, guys. Well, good luck to everybody tonight, and uh, we'll see you at six Eastern. Uh, Sheets. Anything else? No, we're good. All right, guys. Let's take it down. Good luck.